Dear viewers, since our beloved company, Telltale Games, has gone under, without ever releasing the second season of The Wolf Among Us, I will be discussing the comic book version, comparing it to the video game, to give you further insights into the parts of the story that the game developers excluded from the original game. To hopefully, set the foundation of what the story for season 2 could have been based on. The material I will be using for this video is from the official comic book, of the same name. If you wish to read the comic yourself, I will leave a link in the description where you can purchase it. The Wolf Among Us video game stays true to the comic book story, for the most part. Where things start to differentiate is the comics will take you back in time, and into other worlds, to give you a full story, from every angle. In the comics, there are three worlds. The world that we humans live in, the one seen throughout the game. The other world is the fable world, referred to as the homeland in the game. Where all the fables originate from. The third world, is a place called the mirror world. Which is referred to as the silvering. It's a reflection of our world, and the fable world. It's a world inside the mirror. When something dies in our world, it continues living in the mirror world. With that said, there are two of everything. Two of wolves, two of faiths, two of snow whites. One living in our world, and their counterpart living in the mirror world. In the video game, the Bloody Mary character is just glossed over. While in the comics, especially in the second half, she is just as vital as the big bad wolf. They develop her character quite nicely. Telling her background story, and how she came to be known as Bloody Mary. How she had a hard time finding a companion, how the other girls would make fun of her. Until one day, when a man in the mirror approached Mary, with the intent of courting her. Not long after, they got married, and Mary was expecting her first child, with this man that lived inside the mirror. On her pregnancy bed, Mary began to experience some complications giving birth. The man in the mirror, fearing that he might lose the child, he decides to forcefully remove the baby from within Mary. To keep this story as G-rated as possible, I will not go into any further details about how Mary gives birth. Aside from saying, when the whole ordeal was over, the mirror version of Mary passed out. When she came to, she went out seeking her child. Upon confronting her husband, the knave of hearts, he explains to Mary the value of their glass child. That he was planning to use him to get smuggled out of the mirror world. Mary begs the knave of hearts to hand over her kid, so she could say her final goodbyes to him. When Mary finally gets a hold of her child, she throws him down, shattering him to pieces. With the words, a mother should carry her child close to her. Closest skin. And closer still. She injects the broken shards of her child right into her own flesh. The mirror version of the crooked man, much like his real-life counterpart, has a plan to get wealthy. To set his plan into motion, he recruits Bloody Mary, Tweedledum, Tweedledee, the knave of hearts, Abigail, and later on T. Greenleaf. As a side note, Abigail is a witch that Crane loved, back during the Salem witch trials. She is now married to the knave of hearts. And on T. Greenleaf is the lady whose tree you set on fire. The first objective of their plan has the crooked man sending out the twins to kill Grendel's mother and take her heart. He intends to use her heart on Mary's child to open a portal to King Edward's castle. Once inside the castle, Abigail finds the remains of King Edward. Putting on his crown, she gets possessed by Edward's spirit. The crooked man lets Edward know that the reason they are in his castle was because the crooked man was after the donkey that pooped gold. King Edward asks the crooked man to look around. To see the bodies of all the other people who have come to his castle to claim the very same treasure that they are after. To see that all of them have failed. King Edward reminds the crooked man that if he still had the donkey, that his castle, his kingdom, would not be in such a ruined state. King Edward's words spark an idea in Mary. She suggests that if the donkey is dead in our world, then he has to be alive in the mirror world. King Edward realizes the flaw in their plan. Informing them that, in order to get gold out of the donkey, you would need to know the magic word. Which the team does not know. King Edward negotiates with the crooked man that, if the crooked man can get him faith, her three dresses, and possibly get rid of Prince Lawrence, that King Edward would give the crooked man the magical words needed to get the donkey to produce gold. Both parties agree to the deal, and the knave of hearts sets out to find the last person to see the three dresses, Prince Lawrence, Faith's husband. Like in Mary's case, the knave of hearts appears to Prince Lawrence from within a mirror. He speaks to the prince, getting him to confess where the dresses are. That they're with the gatekeeper to our world. Prince Lawrence had to exchange them, as a form of currency, to gain passage to our world. 
The Knave of Hearts then proceeds to fulfill King Edward's other request, and convinces Lawrence that this world would be better off without him. Leaving Lawrence on his deathbed, the Knave of Hearts sets out to get a hold of the dresses, with the knowledge of where the three dresses are. All the crooked man needs now, to get the magical words is Faith herself. In the telltale version of The Wolf Among Us you have the choice to do with the crooked man as you wish. I, personally, chose to serve him just as soon as possible. How it plays out in the comics, is you bring the crooked man back to the witching well, where everyone loses their sanity, when they hear that you wanted to kill a murderer. To make all parties happy, Big B Wolf decides that sending the crooked man to prison would be the best course of action. While in prison, the crooked man asks Big B to fetch him his shaving kit. Wolf blindly obeys, and leaves the crooked man alone with the kit. The crooked man, calmly and collectively, proceeds to shave. When finished, he pulls out the mirror. Wolf, finally realizes the mistake he made, rushes to the crooked man's cell, only to find that the crooked man has used the mirror to cross over to the mirror world. At this point, the crooked man is definitely out of Wolf's reach, and his jurisdiction. As in the video game, Wolf goes out to help the non-glamoured fables move back to the farm. That's when he spots Nerissa, they have a chat, and Nerissa delivers her famous line, you're not as bad as everyone says you are. An ending such as this, has left people wanting more. To finally find out how the story truly ends. To finally find out if Nerissa really is Faith. So, a lot of people have been left asking themselves will there be a season 2? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know. I guess all you have to do is just have some faith.